I'm Tori, and today I'm going to be discussing The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. I listened to the audiobook narrated by Charles Armstrong. So this is Agatha Christie's first book in the Hercule Poirot series, and it was published in 1920. It's set a little bit before that, during World War I, and I think she wrote it um, during World War I, too, and it was just published a little bit later. So I really, really enjoyed this book. The only other Agatha Christie I've read is Murder on the Orient Express, which I also really liked and it's farther down in the Poirot series. So this is the first one. It was really interesting to see that. I didn't realize it was set during World War I. Somehow I thought it would be a little bit more recent than that. And it was great to see. It takes place in this big mansion during World War I with this big cast of characters. And having read this book, I can see it's been parodied so many times. Basically every time I've seen a movie or a TV show or read a book, that um, talks about a murder mystery in a mansion. It's a parody of this book or an homage to it and it's just so cool to see the genesis of all of these tropes and I had so much fun with this book. The mystery was amazing. It was so much fun to watch the characters so I highly recommend that you go read it and then come back to hear my opinions about it. So I love the character of Hercule Poirot and in um, The Murder on the Orient Express I don't remember his character personally standing out that much but in this book it did so much and the whole book felt like an homage to Sherlock Holmes stories. They even have um, a Watson type character is our narrator who's the one telling you this whole story and then Poirot is our Sherlock character. Except what I love about that, you know, in the Sherlock Holmes books, um, everyone respects him so much and he's very eager to show off and let people know that he is to be respected. And Poirot does the opposite. He wants people to ignore him and dismiss him and think he's silly. And it's so great when the narrator does that. The narrator often says, oh yes, well Poirot is obviously just being ridiculous and I am much smarter than he is. And Poirot just kind of goes, oh, of course you are. And it's just, it's so patronizing and a narrator doesn't realize it. And it's great because the narrator is not the most intelligent being on the face of the earth. He, it's so funny. He thinks every woman is flirting with him and he thinks he's got everything figured out. And Poirot just isn't that smart. And it's so great to just see his narration and kind of say, yeah, um, Poirot definitely has this figured out and you're a little slow on the uptake. Not a lot slow, just like a little bit and it, it's very enjoyable. The mystery was so great because everyone basically had a motive to kill Mrs. Inglethorpe and I've seen that parodied in so many other adaptations but this was just done so well and the twist was amazing because they set it up so that the most obvious culprit is the husband. And Poirot's like, no, we can't arrest the husband. We can't arrest the husband. And so you're going, okay, it can't be the husband, even though that's the obvious one. Someone obviously set him up. And then it turns out he set himself up. And somehow they managed to make it so that the most obvious person is the murderer. And you are surprised by this. And that's just such brilliant writing. And I loved it so much. I also thought it was interesting that often in, um, murder mystery stories that I've seen on TV or read newer books of, you know, they'll all be locked in this space and they have to figure it out in one night and that's why the detective is in charge. And in this, Poirot wasn't actually in charge. There were police running around. Poirot is just kind of helping guide the police along. And it was interesting how much he didn't want the police to know about his involvement. He made sure that every major thing that happened was um, kind of set into motion by someone else and that he was very inconsequential so that no one would know and that was just so clever and the book took place over such a long period of time you know we have like it's slowly building up and then we um, finally we have all these legal things going through and it was just interesting to watch it actually take this much time and it's more realistic that way because Poirot is brilliant but he can't just solve a whole murder in one night and figure out everyone's motives and come up with rock-solid evidence against the murderer. And that was just so perfect, the way that it just kind of slowly built up and then he gets all of his pieces to fall into place and Poirot just steals the show and I love that so much. So this was a very enjoyable murder mystery story. I can't wait to read the next Poirot novel. I'm curious to know, I love this setup where they have the narrator being someone else, but then I know that it won't stay that way throughout the whole series because um, Murder on the Orient Express was actually from Poirot's viewpoint. So I hope it stays like this a long time because I actually like this narration style way better. And I'm hoping it's that way in the next book and I cannot wait to read more Agatha Christie.